lab today and this is going to be a really quick video uh, we're going to tune this cell wave uh, just needs a minor adjustment it's already at 4627 and 4677 and we're going to go bring it to 46255 and 46755 so should be a really quick thing um, I actually do like these these are kind of the newer style but anyway stay tuned and uh, we're going to get this tuned up Okay, so we've got everything hooked up and basically the first thing I want to look at is uh, we want to look at our maximum return loss to set this um, RX side. Right now it's coming in at about, uh, it's actually 462.3. Um, which is a little less, it's not exactly tuned uh, for the frequencies it lists here. Uh, so we're going to bump that up, up into this uh, uh, 0.55 range again we're just making a little minor adjustment to this um, so this shouldn't take too long basically what you want to do is make sure that you don't get confused on which direction uh, you're looking at the way that I ask everybody to bring these to me is tell me what your repeater is transmitting on and what it what it is receiving on not not what your portable is doing because it's going to be the exact opposite but what is your receiver or uh, your repeater actually set to what is it going to transmit at and what is it going to receive at um, so I'm going to basically get this tuned, kind of go over maybe what some of these things do on the back here, um, and then show you the end result. And um, this, this should work really well. Um, this is a newer unit. Um, it may be brand new. I'm not really sure. It doesn't appear to have ever been used. But um, let me get this set up, and I'm going to do a little bit of tuning and get it really close, and then show you the end result. Okay, so here's kind of where we're at now, and this is not generally uh, what I use. This is just running a sweep uh, just to get some real quick tuning, and then I'll actually put this unit. It actually has a mode for return loss. Um, and, but you can kind of see here, this is where we want it to be. Um, this is where it's at now. It's actually not exactly tuned to what's marked on the uh, unit. Um, it's slightly lower. Uh, we're actually going to move it uh, to right there on the RX. And we're going to move this uh, this TX out here. Uh, we want that notch to be as high as possible uh, for the frequency. Um, and again, it's it's not exactly tuned. It's probably actually within range. This, other than this, this comes pretty close to working. It's just going to require a little minor tune on the RX, um, and this will be really close to working. Okay, so we've got this tuned really close. Um, I'm going to make one final pass on it just to make sure. Um, a big thing I'll mention. Uh, you want to use either, I, I like the nut driver method, uh, but basically you need to back these uh, holder nuts off just a little bit and then slightly tighten them up. Then you want to use a really good screwdriver that fits the groove well. You definitely don't want to snap off uh, one of these ends. Um, and basically just make finite adjustments. So on the, uh, the main, main adjustments that you'll be making, um, you'll go kind of across the board to set the RX. The TX is a lot easier to set. It's going to be just a nice, uh, you basically just want to make sure that you don't have a lot of uh, loss uh, on the TX side when this is transmitting. And you want to reject anything on the RX uh, that isn't the frequency that you want to receive. So that, that's going to effectively isolate your TX frequency from your RX frequency as much as possible. Um, now obviously these are, are little mobile units and they're not going to have as much rejection uh, as uh, a big cavity but they still work pretty well and this one actually tuned out really well uh, it's going to be more than 30 db probably like 45 db uh, of rejection uh, and that's the minimum i think um, is what i'm seeing on the scope here i can count the blocks one two three four about 45 to 47 db of rejection coming so, out the big thing is once you get these set you want to make sure that you slowly um, I like looking at the SA while it's doing tracking uh, and basically slowly tighten these screws and tighten the nuts up. You don't really want these to move. I do tell everybody this this is probably the most sensitive area of the unit. So if you're installing this, you don't want to be banging on these stems that are sticking out because it will change the tune. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll actually look at it while it's doing a sweep and I'll just push with my finger um just to make sure i don't have any big movements this one here i see a little bit of movement but it's 
it's actually not getting worse it's actually getting a little bit better so um, we'll tighten that one up here just a sec just a little bit more so this one here probably needs just a little bit more tension give that a check okay, that looks pretty good there um, so all these are tight now they don't they won't move um, as long as you know nothing impacts it or anything really is uh, changing anything if you're really concerned about it um, if it's a if it's a, like an emergency um, use repeater or something like that something you may have out in the field I recommend just putting a little dot of green Loctite uh, just to lock up those threads and make sure that they don't turn a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually take a white paint marker and put a white mark so that I can see uh, where where this was at when I installed it and see if there's any movement. Uh, as far as connecting up, I have a really basic setup. Uh, I've got the HP uh, SA. Um, this particular test, I've got both in terminated. Um, and we basically have that going into a return loss bridge. Uh, running on the on the SA itself so one other thing is make sure you use high quality cables a lot of the, a lot of times what I do is when I first hook this up right as I'm getting ready to take my measurements go and check every single connection the worst thing that you can do is have a bad connection and then start tuning and then realize that you had, <laughs> had a terrible connection to begin with so I always just go check all your connections all the way back to your SA Make sure all your readings look good. Make sure that everything's stable before you start adjusting. Okay, so this is kind of where we're at. Um, this is going to be really close. This is at 462. The marker is at 46254. Um, and we, we have the maximum uh, drop. So basically, this is the receive side. Uh, the re Let me see if I can move that and hold the camera at the same time. So we're going to go, we're going to move the marker up to. Uh, what was that again? Four six seven five five, I believe. Four six seven five five. So that's probably the closest marker. But as you can see, there's very little loss. Um, that's probably about as good as I can get it. So really, you're looking at these two points. What's the difference between these two points? Um, and if you look, uh, these are 10 dB blocks, so, you know, one, two, three, four, a little bit more than four. Um, so you've got probably like plus two here, and probably, probably like a plus two here. So you figure 44 dB of, reject, of uh, isolation. Uh, anyway, um, I hope that makes sense, and, you know, don't, don't be too skittish about tuning one of these. They're really actually not that bad. You can actually do this, especially for a traditional ham style repeater. You can basically, if you've got a transmitter and a receiver, um, you can almost send a tone and uh, you know get really close just with a tone. You don't necessarily need an SA, although an SA is way easier to do it. Um, if I hadn't been re video recording this, I probably could have tuned this in probably under 20 minutes. Um, that includes like a rough tune and then a final tune. Um, but that's the easiest way that I found to do it. And uh, this should work out really well. This is actually a really, really nice little cell wave. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.